Coffee Lake is fake news. You can't get it anywhere. See, you can't prove it exists. Coffee Lake is fake news. Cafefi Lake. Oh wait, it's not fake news. So this weekend I finally got my hands on my Coffee Lake processors and actually was able to put them through some paces and test out productivity based tasks. So all of the charts that follow are going to be based on content creators like myself or people that just generally do a lot of tasks that involve uh, very well multi-threaded applications. But if you're interested in gaming benchmarks, don't worry, those are coming for both the i5-8400 and the i3-8350K. And also before we jump into the benchmarks, it's worth noting that you can find the links to all of these processors uh, on Amazon in the description down below. However, good luck actually being able to order them because they're virtually all out of stock unless you're willing to pay a lot more than uh, is the MSRP. So there's not really much else to say other than hopping over to those charts so we can take a look at the benchmarks for both the i3 and the i5. So starting off with our benchmarks, we have Cinebench R15. The darker bar there is gonna be the multi-threaded score and the lighter bar is the single-threaded score. And unsurprisingly, running the i3 at nearly five gigahertz does give us a uh, significantly better single-threaded score. However, if you're looking for anything multi-threaded, including gaming or productivity, which is what we're focused on today, the 8400 does reign supreme here. Also worth noting that 8400 bar at the bottom with the 102.3, base clock comes as a result of enabling multi-core enhancement with an XMP profile from my Asus motherboard. And of course, when you start fiddling with those settings that are not intended by Intel, like multi-core enhancement, then your results may vary from vendor to vendor. This is an Asus Prime uh, Z370A motherboard, for those of you wondering. Moving on to Premiere Pro, which is the application that I'm most interested in. I uh, rendered out a 4K video, and the result was that the 8400, unsurprisingly, does beat the 8350K by a somewhat significant margin there. Um, with the base clock overclock uh, being the best result and the stock 8400 coming in barely behind it. Moving on to Handbrake, taking a 4K video and transcoding it to a 1080p version. Again, we see the i5-8400 significantly beating out the 8350K. But then we move on to 7-Zip, and actually the 8350K does win out in compressing that final video file with a 126 second compression compared to 130 and 135 for the 8400, both with the overclock and at stock settings. And finally, we ran the AMD Blender benchmark that AMD used to show off its Ryzen processors, and we've once again unsurprisingly found that the 8400 is significantly better than the 8350K, even overclocked to 4.8 gigahertz. So about a year ago now, you could actually get an i5-6600K, which had four cores and four threads, and you would expect to pay about $240 for that. But the i3-8350K retails for under 200. In fact, I got mine for $180 and gives you those same four cores also unlocked and mine was able to hit 5.0 gigahertz and actually stay relatively stable under stress testing. So it's interesting that a setup like a four core, four thread processor that's unlocked from Intel used to be sort of the go-to gaming chip for uh, mid-range PCs and now a similar setup for $60 cheaper doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, at least in the productivity space. Now, obviously the 8350K is not even geared at productivity, but there will be people that are like content creators, maybe just starting a YouTube channel, that will use it for both gaming as well as their content creation. And to those people, I would say, probably based on the other benchmarks from gaming that I've seen, you may just wanna avoid this processor altogether. The reason being, of course, you can get the i5-8400, which comes with a cooler, so you don't have to make that extra investment in buying an aftermarket cooler, and it keeps it you know, okay on the temperatures. It does keep it under control. It's not got a thermal throttle or anything like that, as long as you're not in a very small form factor case. And for about the same price, you get two extra cores, and sure, they're locked, but in productivity tasks, it actually pays off in a big way. And basically everything that I've seen on the gaming benchmark side is that the 8400 isn't really that much off of uh, top tier processors like the 8700K in gaming benchmarks. So I have a very hard time imagining when I do get around to my gaming benchmarks that the 8350K is gonna give any sort of noticeable um, improvement over the 8400. And in productivity tasks, 
the 8400 is definitely the way to go. So here's where I want to kick it back to you guys. If you're planning on upgrading or building a Coffee Lake system, which processor does it look like you're going to go with? Are you going to stick with one of the lower cost i3 processors like the 8100 and pay around that $120 mark? Are you going to spend the $185-ish dollars that you'll spend on an 8400 when they're available? Or are you going to spend and get an unlocked i5 or an unlocked i7 processor? Let me know in those comments down below. And as always guys, if you like this content, give me a like, share, subscribe, comment, all those things are very helpful to the channel. You can follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware, they're the same tag for your convenience. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.